Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you my most worn jewellery pieces and then also do a little bit of an updated jewellery collection. In front of me over here, I have these two trays. I really enjoy storing my jewellery like this because I have an acrylic lid over these so I can see very clearly what I have inside. It makes selecting jewellery every morning super easy because I can just see everything very clearly. I am going to start off with rings today because there is one particular ring stack which I wear very often and this is the only thing that I would say I repeat most days when it comes to my jewellery. On this finger here I have a snake ring which is a vintage ring and I got this from a seller called Keepsake Gems on Instagram. I was really drawn to the fact that this ring is very solid, it feels like a very strong and statement piece of jewellery and I also like the details including the diamonds for the snake eye and then a little opal in the mouth. To balance off the chunky ring, I have a Majuri band here. This is a white gold band with little diamonds, and I like the contrast between these two pieces. On this hand, I have a ring from the 1920s. So this is an antique piece, and it has a sapphire in the middle, as well as two little diamonds on the side. So this is definitely one of my most extravagant jewelry purchases. This one I really enjoyed because my birthstone was on it, but I also like the design where the stones are flush against the setting. I think it's called a bezel setting. I like how flat it is because something like this for me feels a lot more delicate and it does catch on to things a lot easier. I would say about 90% of the time this is my ring stack which I'm wearing. These are all of my daintier rings and these are I think all from Majuri. One of my favorite designs is this one because it's got so many little pave stones that it just catches the light really beautifully. When it comes to their simple bands, this is definitely my favorite one. I just feel like the way it's cut makes it feel really unique. My last favorite of these dainty pieces is this one. Everything about this ring is very dainty and very minimal and I just love it stacked with other rings or worn alone. My next piece of jewelry is from the brand Le Nareed and it's this little ballerina ring. Ring. This was a gift from my best friend about five or six years ago. I really love it because it feels very whimsical and girly. This brand does a lot of very fun whimsical jewelry and I'm actually going to be showing you another piece from them a little bit later. I really love this brand for costume jewelry and I think if you're looking for something fun, something that's a little bit different than all the minimal stuff out there, you can check out this brand. The next two rings I have are quite similar and this one here is from Monica Veneta. And this one here is from Majuri. I really like that these have a floating look to them. And I usually wear these layered because they are quite subtle. I've got two gemstone rings here. So this red one is a garnet ring and this one's by Majuri. And then the pink one over here is an antique ring. This one is from the brand Otsby Barden. And Otsby Barden was a jewellery designer, but he was unfortunately on the Titanic. His company made a lot of jewellery during the start of the 20th century. And I believe this brand of jewellery, Otsby Barden, is very popular amongst antique jewelry collectors because of the history. One of my oldest jewelry pieces is the silver band from Tiffany & Co. This is a part of their 1837 collection and I remember wearing this piece every single day for many 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 years. These are the last three rings in my collection and these are all antique as well. These two over here I purchased from Etsy again. I get most of my antique jewelry from Etsy. And as I've been saying, I'm going to link to my favorite sellers down below. And then this one is from my mom. This one is actually missing a tiny little diamond. So I need to get this one fixed. But this one is from my mom. In my rings category, I don't have too many costume jewelry options. Just because sometimes when it comes to light plating, I'm worried about how it will wear, especially you know with working with your hands as well as washing your hands all the time I get a bit nervous about costume pieces in rings. I'm going to move on to my statement earrings now. I feel like earrings are probably my favorite category. My most worn lately has been these earrings and these are from Acne Studio. I think that the amount of detail in these are incredible and I love that yellow color against the white. My next pair of earrings are from Ana Luisa. And they're little cloud earrings with pearl droplets. These are a few years old now and I just always think these are super cute earrings whenever I want something that feels a bit more fun and playful. You're about to see later on that I'm hugely into hoop earrings and I have quite a few pairs. This one is a bit different. This one's from Majuri and you've got pearls on the hoop. I like that the pearls are all irregular in size and these are just a really nice statement option. One of my only pairs of silver earrings are this pair and I actually made these with my best friend. We signed ourselves up for a silver jewelry making class and this is what we got.
These earrings look a little bit tarnished, but anytime my silver jewelry looks quite dull or quite dark, what I do is that I take a silver polishing cloth and I just clean it. It always makes it look super shiny and new again. I've tried polishing cloths from almost every brand. For me, they all work the same and they all get the job done. We've got a pair of earrings from about four years ago. These are from the brand Le Nareed again. And these ones I actually got in their store in Paris. After I purchased these, I went to a cafe nearby and the lovely waitress was obsessed with this brand and she basically showed me all her pieces that she was wearing from Lena Reed. I'm gonna move on to my hoop earrings now and I have quite a few of these. A lot of them are from Majuri. These earrings right here are my largest hoop. They're quite a thin hoop which makes them quite easy to wear despite the size. My most worn hoop earrings are these ones. These are a really nice medium sized hoop and they're just easy, simple, but made from a solid material. So very durable, can't really go wrong with these. If I could only have one pair of hoops, it would definitely be this pair. Another pair of my most worn are these ones. These are much smaller than my last one, but they are chunkier. With these three hoops, I pretty much have hoops of every size. I've got a fun pair here, and these ones just have gold beads. These earrings here are not solid. These are gold vermeil, so gold over sterling silver. When it comes to gold vermeil pieces, I would expect it to last between 5 and 10 years before I need to plate it again. I've had some pieces made from vermeil last 5 years with no issues, um, and I just haven't had jewellery that is as old as 10, so I can't really comment on that. Yet. This one here is my smallest hoop. These are two-tone in color and they've also got some diamond details throughout the style. I do have a second piercing in both ears and I have a couple of these really small hoops, which won't focus, um, that I put in my second piercing. I don't change these earrings very often and I usually don't take them off either. So that's probably the only jewelry that I sleep in. Onto my necklaces now. I don't feel like I did a very good job of layering these. So they, I feel like it's a tangled mess. I find because I'm often wearing an earring that is a bit more statement, I tend to go very subtle on my necklace if I wear one at all. One of my favorites is this little pearl necklace. I really love that it uses tiny pearls. These tiny pearls feel a little bit more modern and minimal compared to your classic string of pearls. These are from a jewelry, by the way. I've got this necklace, which is an antique rose gold pocket watch chain. I believe, and I might be making this up, this is called an Albert chain, where you attach one side to a jacket and one side to a watch. And that was the original purpose of these chains. On Etsy now, I see a lot of these as necklaces and I just think it's a very cool style because it used to be a pocket watch chain. I don't have a lot of rose gold. I won't say I'm absolutely obsessed with rose gold, but this piece of jewelry, I just really like. This is a Majuri snake chain. I find that snake chains are really beautiful because they're just so, so shiny. If you really enjoy layering necklaces and you've got some of the normal chains, this provides a really nice contrast to your necklace stack. This is the baby box chain from Majuri. I do work with Majuri, but I've also purchased a lot of their jewelry and this is one example. I wore this for many years because I like how subtle it is. Right now I have a little H hang off it. This is my most statement necklace and it's this Victorian bloodstone pendant. It's a spinner fob and it's got green on one side and then red on the other. It's a very antique Victorian looking pendant. It's kind of heavy looking. So I went for a slightly chunkier chain to pair it with. And if I'm wearing, once again, like minimal earrings, then I'll go for this pendant as a statement piece. These are my last few necklaces and all of these have a floating pendant. These options are from Majuri and this is just a little diamond on a white gold chain. This one is very similar except we've got a little bar as opposed to the round shape. We've also got this one in gold and this one has a little pave pendant. Anything pave from Majuri is just super super shiny. So that is everything in this tray here. Very quickly before we finish up this very long video, I'm going to show you what's um, left in this tray here. These three things I feel like really belong in the other tray. I've just kind of run out of space so I've put them here. And then these other things are things that I pull out every so often but don't wear as much as everything else. We've got a larger pearl earring from Monica Vinita and then we've also got a more subtle option also from Monica Vinita. I often like to mismatch these so wearing these two together or wearing this 
with like a hoop or something. I have this pearl pendant from Majuri just on a longer chain. I find this to be the perfect layering length because then I might combine it with one of my regular length necklaces which usually ends somewhere here. I've got this pair of earring from Kendra Scott. So I found this in the sales and it's just a beautiful orangey red stone on a simple gold frame. I don't know much about this brand but they had a lot of beautiful colors. I very often wear a neutral outfit or all white and I feel like this will be a really good earring to add color to those outfits. I've also got these gorgeous earrings that look like lanterns. These are from my aunt and I think she had them custom made at a jeweler. I don't really have much to say about these except for the fact that they're super cute and I reach for them every year during Lunar New Year. I've completely changed my mind. I don't think I wear any of these pieces less often than what was in my first tray. I think I just organized it badly and just ended up putting it in the second tray because there was more space. This is definitely first tray worthy because I'm obsessed with the links on this. There is no other chain that I own that looks as shiny and as beautiful as this one. It genuinely catches the light in an unbelievable way. My mom is even obsessed with this and she's not into the gold chains. She thinks gold chains are very tacky, especially when they're larger, but even she's into this one because of the links. This next piece of jewelry is definitely my oldest because I was given this when I was born and I was officially given it, I think around like 18 or something. This is a very special pendant. It's got a Chinese character for good fortune, luck on one side. And then on the other side, there is a rat because I was born year of the rat. This is a very sentimental piece of jewelry. It's not something that I really wear. It's not something I style. But it's just a very sentimental thing that I'll have for the rest of my life. This is a very lovely necklace from my boyfriend from the brand by Charlotte, which is an Australian jewelry company. I wore this every single day for many years. I think I got this about five years ago now, so when we first started going out. So it's a very sentimental piece of jewelry. I don't really wear this piece as often anymore, but maybe I should. I feel like the way the pendants are positioned is really unique and it just gives it a very nice shape. Once again, the small things that count and I like the way it hangs off the chain. You might have noticed that I pretty much have no bracelets because I just don't really wear them. If I was to wear a bracelet or if I wanted to wear a bracelet for whatever reason, this is the one that I would go for. When it comes to simple chains and bracelets, or necklaces. I'm always just looking for interesting links that catch the light really well. I usually will take off a pendant from a necklace and thread it through when I want to wear it. My final item is this Monica Vinader pendant. Green is one of my favorite colors so I really enjoy this. I can thread it into this little hoop and then wear it mismatched with the other hoop since I only have one of these. I can wear it on a necklace of course, I can wear it on a bracelet. You can pretty much do whatever and interchange any pendant with this one. I thought it was over but I've got one final thing and that is this troll beads bracelet that I have. I got this while traveling a couple of years ago. I also have in my collection two Pandora bracelets. I got my first job when I was 14 at McDonald's and I think I spent most of my paycheck on my first Pandora bracelet. So I do still have it for sentimental reason and the fact that I spent a lot of my paycheck on a Pandora bracelet. This is a really good example of something that is no longer, you know, in style, no longer trendy, but I genuinely really love this. So it's something I want to keep for a very long time and then just pull out every so often. I hope I was able to edit this video down to a watchable length. It is very long right now. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my jewelry collection. I wanted to ask if you guys had a recommendation of where I can find cool stamen earrings. I'm just looking for some new brands that I can explore as opposed to the ones I constantly turn to. As usual, if you guys enjoyed the video, I would love for you to go hit the like button down below. I hope you guys have a very lovely week ahead and I'll see you next week with a fashion video. Bye.